Hello, I'm Christine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today we are discussing Crooked Kingdom by Leah Bardugo. Crooked Kingdom is the second and final book in Lee's Six of Crows duology. Six of Crows is set in the Grishaverse. In a country called Kerch, in a city called Ketherdam, where we follow Kaz Brecker's crew of miscreants as they make their living pulling off extravagant cons. And it's wonderful. And not only is this duology so much fun, it's also written so well. In Crooked Kingdom, it really expands our view of this world that our characters live in. I I have to go read the Grisha trilogy now because I feel like I know so much about Rothka that I've learned just in passing in this duology. I'm gonna take an educated guess that some of the Rothkins we we see in Meet and Crooked Kingdom are maybe lead characters in the Grisha trilogy. So I'm super excited to devour their stories and actually be in Rothka. I mean, don't get me wrong, Gather Them is great, but we learn about Rothka and we never get to go there. I'm sure you guys who have read the Grisha trilogy know so much about it. Anyway, Crooked Kingdom! If you are wondering, you can read the Six of Crows duology before you've read the Grisha trilogy as proven by myself, but that background probably gives you more fun insight into the Rothkin culture that we see in the duology. Okay, let's just get into this. I really loved Crooked Kingdom and Six of Crows. I love this cast of characters. We learned so much more about each of them in Crooked Kingdom. And I wasn't expecting so much of that in Crooked Kingdom since it is the second and final book, but at the same time, there are only two books. So if we don't learn now, we're not gonna get that depth. While I love Six of Crows, I feel like Crooked Kingdom overall was the stronger of the two. I found the struggle of what was actually going on, like the plot and the heists and the cons, so much more all-consuming than it had been in Six of Crows. There was a really nice balance of character development, backstory, depth, and plot. I really haven't read that many duologies. I think this is the second duology I finished, the first one being the Passenger duology. I never know what to expect with the finales because when you have the trilogy format, you kind of expect to be disappointed in the finale because so many times the third book doesn't really satisfy you. This book was satisfying. There's definitely more story to tell if Lee wanted to go back in and tell it. And I'm wondering like, is she going to tell another story in Rothka? Crooked Kingdom gets a 95% from me. Highly recommend. I actually read both of these books via audiobook and that's why I read Crooked Kingdom via audiobook because Six of Crows audiobook was so excellent. Excellent. I actually audiobooked maybe like 95% of Crooked Kingdom and then the last 5% I was reading along and audiobooking. It's a full cast. If you're interested, I'm an Audible affiliate. I have a link in the description. If you use it, you can get your first audiobook for free. I think that's gonna be it for my non-spoilery section. These books were excellent. Go read them if you haven't and then come back and we can discuss together. Bye bye non spoiler fuck. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, so if you haven't finished Crook of Kingdom at this point, you gotta leave. Leave if you haven't read it. Bye-bye. So I just now finished Crooked Kingdom. Still processing my emotions. I cried a bunch of times. I wasn't expecting to, but but I did. The most recent being when Kaz and Edge were looking out on the dock and he gave her those binoculars and he was like, look, and there was a ship for her and it was called the Rath. And then the Rothkin ship pulled up and he told her to look again and her parents came off the ship. It was just so nice. And Kaz wasn't wearing his gloves. Learning more about Kaz and really seeing him struggle with his past trauma. I felt for him so hard. We heard about how he stole himself to get over it back in the beginning of his drag days because he's strong and he's not gonna let it take him. He's not gonna let it rule him. And they go out on a mission and he touches the guy and he can't, he can't master it. He can't stop it when he touches the person. He can't fight through it even though he was trying so hard to. It just broke my heart hearing him talk about it in such detail. I love that we really got to understand that vulnerable side of him. It's so relatable to me. I'm sure it's relatable to a lot of you that have struggled mentally with different things throughout your life. And hearing him admit to himself that, you know, he didn't let them down. It was Jordy who actually let them down. He was the big brother and he let himself get carried away. That allowed for them to be duped by a man like Pekka Rollins. Ugh, I loved hearing more about Inej growing up as an acrobat and how she learned and went from level to level and Jesper and his mom and how the fabricator part of him actually lends to his amazing sharpshooter abilities I loved when he curved the bullet at the end. I loved it. I was so proud. Oh my god. Learning about Matthias. I loved Nina and Matthias in this book. We got so much amazing banter between the two of them. And seeing Nina struggle with Perem just continually was heartbreaking. And learning that her power had left her and she 
still couldn't eat and how she treated Matthias. The addict aspect of it was just so real and scary. I loved the part when the two of them were out handing out the costumes to promote that Ketterdam play. And Nina was like, could you not glower at everyone you see? And seeing Matthias really look inward about how he was raised and trying to conquer these prejudices that had really just been drilled into him for so long. Learning about his wolf kind of reminded me of Game of Thrones and their dire wolves and the relationship there. When he saw that kid in the street, that young kid with the gun, I knew the kid was gonna shoot. I didn't know if Matthias was gonna die in that moment, but I knew he was gonna shoot. It was so sad. And that scene where Nina finds him and he's dying was so sad. And there's that moment where we think, is she gonna bring him back with her weird corpse abilities? But if she doesn't, she can't. It doesn't work like that. And I'm so glad that's where we left it because the emotional impact was so strong. I was so sad. I was doing my makeup and I was just crying, messing up. Another one of my favorite scenes, the night they were all set to pull off that sugar con. Nedge was set to walk the wire to 10 different sugar silos and destroy them all with the weeble that Wyland made. Mm, my heart, I was freaking out reading that. But I think we see from a Nedge first and she's on the roof and everything's going fine. And then that white dagger demon assassin bitch shows up and my heart, oh my God. And she's tired. She's like, I can't win here. I gotta change the game. She can't follow me out onto the wire. And then this bitch walks out on to the wire. That was horrifying. The last thing we see, she cut the wire and Inej fell. And then we go to everyone else where everything else is going to shit. Because Van Neck has joined forces with Pekka Rollins and everything sucks. One line that really resonated with me that I had to pause and write it down because I was like, this is so real. Was well, something that Kaz Brecker said. Kaz Brecker said a lot of things actually that I wanted to write down and some of them I was like driving so I couldn't write it down and I wish I went back. But he was talking to Wyland about his, your weaknesses and how your weaknesses end up making you stronger. He said it slash Lee said it in such a beautiful way. And that's when Pekka Rollins comes in is like, Kaz Brecker Street rat and philosopher. Oh, I love the voices the cast do in Crooked Kingdom. Pekka Rollins has an Irish accent, and then the Rothkins have this sort of Russian accent. Um, they're my favorite. I love when they hear that. I, like, I love when Nina thinks back to lessons that she learned back in Rothka, and like those specific lessons the actor will do in the Rothkin accent. Back to what I was saying about philosopher Kaz Brecker. Does Kaz Brecker is just such an interesting character. Like, I don't want to end with him now. I love to just follow his story. I loved when Inej said that she's not done with Ketterdam. There's more to this city. She's not giving up on Ketterdam yet, and I'm not giving up on you. There's more good here than it lets on. And they kind of make a pact to be the Batman and woman of Ketterdam. They can't be the heroes that the city deserves, but they'll be the villains that it needs. Is that the quote? Whatever Batman says at the end of the Dark Knight. Anyway, Kaz had this whole speech about why these rich smart men make for such great marks. Rich men want to believe that they deserve every penny they've got. So they forget what they owe to chance, but smart men are always looking for loopholes because they want an opportunity to gain the system. Which just struck so many chords. Like, true story, man. Wow. I feel like I've learned so much about cons reading this book. Every time I read a book or watch a character who's a con artist, I get that much more suspicious about everyone I ever meet. <laughs> The scene when Kaz meets with Sturbron, like the pirate sent by Rothka to negotiate for them, who was actually the king, blew my mind. I was just like, pff, 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 what? This gang, the cro the dregs, are in cahoots with the king of Rothka? Cray, cray, cray. Damn, look at the inside flap. This is so nice. Oh my god, I didn't talk about Jesper and Wyland. Oh, oh my god, this scene where Jesper accidentally kisses the Judah Perem son was mortifying. I mean, it was funny, but I felt so bad. Like, for what? That was just so embarrassing. But I love that it didn't take long for Wyland and Jesper to reconcile and have their own kiss. And I love at the end how Jesper offers to stay and be the person who reads stuff to Wyland. They're just so sweet. I love that Wyland's the one to bring up the idea that like maybe his fabricator powers are what makes him the sharpshooter that he is. I knew at the end that like everything was part of the con. Like, you know, when Wyland was fake kidnapped and then he broke and told his dad everything. That whole heist was so complicated. It had so many different aspects to it. It was so much fun to watch it play out. I loved watching
watching Inej conquer the white demon blade assassin on the roof. You know what we didn't really get resolve about was those shoe soldiers that they'd had their fabricators on Perem make. Those were horrifying. And that could be a whole nother book. Once that's happened, I thought that that was going to be a really large part of the plot, but it was kind of just introducing the idea of these other villains. And we have no idea how many there are, what horrible atrocities they could commit in the future. So we'll see with that. I love just like a contemporary novel about Anej and Brecker, like set in their world with everything going on, but like just focused on the progression of their relationship. I think that would be adorable and beautiful and frustrating in the best way. I'm open to so many more stories with these characters. I love how the book ends with Pekka Raleigh just in fear. Oh my god, I didn't talk about that scene yet. That whole bluff with Kaz saying that he took his son and buried him alive. I was so emotional. The tears falling down my face when Pekka Rollins was begging to know where his son was and Kaz wasn't telling him and he couldn't remember Jordy's name and I was so upset and I didn't think that Kaz had actually buried him, but it, the scene was just so powerful. Seeing Pekka get so emotional and care so much about another human being and hearing Kaz really become the villain there, like really spin this around on its head and make us really sympathize with Pekka. I didn't care what sort of justification Kaz would have there. I was not on his side. It, it was just mortifying. I was expecting it to be a bluff. It was, but it didn't matter in that moment. Yet it's so scary how kind of twisted the whole thing was because Kaz did that because that's now going to haunt Pekka for the rest of his life. And just like Kaz said, he can only actually kill Pekka's son once. It's scary. Like we know there's a line with Kaz, but he can bluff us into thinking he crossed it because we can believe he would cross it. He's such an interesting character. That was a fantastic scene. It's like burned into my mind. It's such a standout in the book. I'd love to hear what scenes stand out to you, your favorite parts of the book. Please share your thoughts. I'm Christine. Thank you so much for watching. I make videos every Tuesday. I'm at xteenway on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye!